Welcome back to the reality, guys. I'm your host, Brian, and today I'm talking Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 8, entitled Exes Meet the Nexes. So just like the title implied and the tease for last week, the women have to introduce the men to their exes. And I think it's just the exes of their choice because um, as we see uh, later in the episode, that I guess you do have the option to not do that. But um, yeah, I thought this was interesting. I'm not I'm totally sure. Um, I was looking on Reddit today that I guess this is a normal thing. As someone who's watched this, this is the first season I've ever seen. I thought it was really interesting. So I'm sure not moving the needles much for the like loyal watchers of this this franchise but i will know those things soon enough um so let's start off with the um with the dates and who they chose to bring to meet the men and things like that i'll just run chronologically down the episode uh patrice patrice's ex is dro and he's here to meet alonzo and william um dro is uh now married um they're friends now so it looks like a lot of these ones that didn't really have any exes that are have a I guess super troubled like a uh, rocky relationship or they probably did at some point but maybe they reconciled I mean these are we, we're talking about some older people here so it is nice um he refers to Patrice as a blessing um as as what their least favorite thing about her is um and uh it, it I, I was I was kind of torn because the, the way this one went I really thought that Drew was gonna like Alonzo more but he actually ended up liking William more than Alonzo and um Patrice is just she's she just doesn't know like when Alonzo's being serious and like when he um he doesn't know I guess like is he joking all the time or like can he actually have a serious moment and later in the episode I will I'm gonna just probably go couple by couple actually which like but I'll chronologically do the date um Alonzo does ran out of museum and take Patrice on a date at the end of the episode and she was really surprised by that um didn't think that he had that in him to do something like that so I think that scored some major points for her but um, I think he's only been locked in on her. So a lot of the other women that are still on there in the process are not fully like oh, Alonzo. Like, I don't know what I meant. Cause I think they're still communicating. I think they are communicating because they do reference like at the, um, like the ceremony where they're going to decide who they're going to get rid of um, that. They haven't been talking to me. They keep referencing like they haven't called me or, and I, I'm wondering if that's during the entire show or like, when they were still in like the courting or like finalizing or locking in their like ones and twos. So if you know, let me know. Um, I, I'm interested by that because I, I guess maybe there's things we don't see. Maybe they all go on dates. I just, I just don't know. Um, and for William, um, his anger, like not like he's like, he's an angry person, but like how he handles, like when there's conflict, he says that he steps out, um, needs to think about the situation, reflect on it before getting back into discussing what the issue is. So, yeah, yeah, Dro Dro likes William a little more, and William wasn't on the bottom chop block this week. So it, it's he, but if William, that's the thing that I was saying. Alonzo only has really one connection with Patrice. William has another connection as well, which we will get to. Uh, so before the next day, Mika and Tommy talk. She does not want to reach out to any of her exes, so she says she has two exes. One of them, she has no communication with whatsoever, and then the one she had her children with he's only interested in things that involve their sons. So no reason. She's like, I'm not reaching out to any of them. And Tommy's like, I'll show up instead. And um thing about Tommy going is like, he obviously hosts the show, knows all the things to ask. He's going to come in. He's actually going to make, probably that would be the toughest interview compared to the, the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriends that come in because Tommy knows what to ask. He, he's not going to be shy about saying stuff or making the, the moment like not awkward, but like, you need, to, you need to ask these questions if you're going to get to know, like, hey, maybe I'm going to be with this person. <laughs> All right, so um, Vanessa and her ex, Thomas, and the, she has Chaz and Dominique, and Chaz is, Chaz is still, like, the probably the number one guy in, on the show for, like, connections. Like, I can't really say anything bad about Chaz. I like Chaz. I think he's a really cool dude. Um, he shows up with flowers. Um, Dominique, we haven't seen a ton of him. He... I don't want to say he's misunderstood, but like he, I, I like him. I mean, the only, I think the only negative thing that I can say about him is like, he came in hot in the beginning saying like, Hey, I want 10 kids. I mean, that's just a crazy thing to say, especially to a woman, women that have already had kids. And like, they're probably like, I don't want to have any more kids. Like they're going to be like, see ya, I'm out. Like, but I, I like him. Um, again, we just don't see a ton of them. And 
it's going to stay that way. And um, I thought that their, their day went fine. It was nothing like crazy there. Um, still think Chaz is probably the front runner between um, after like what Thomas thinks and how the interactions went. But yeah, yeah, I, I was a good date. Uh, Maya has her ex, Wes. And her ex, she said, I think in a confessional that um, she still thinks that he might have romantic feelings for her or like still kind of into her. So that's something to consider when watching this. Um, she has Justin and William. So like I said earlier, William had, he has like a possible, possible more than one connection compared to Alonzo. So yeah, I mean, he, William, I think has been like maybe near the bottom, but he, he always is just skating by. I guess he, he has these strong connections here. So um the one thing I noticed from that is Justin um, was worried that Wes keeps bringing up financials, like how financially stable you are and things like that. And like, he's a teacher and um, Williams like ex military. And he even said, like, like, I'm not like rolling in it over here. So like, if that's something that's going to be a, like a serious thing about like financials and like, I think Justin gave the impression that like, I'm wondering, he, he I feel the way he said it was like, he's implying that maybe she like wants, um, like somebody that's like well off, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I totally got that, but I can understand if that question comes up and you're on dating, like, Hey, what, what you're going to, you're going to question everything and think about all situations. So um, for here, I, I don't know which one I, um, maybe William, I think for her, but like, I like Justin a lot. I think he's, he's really cool. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what they're gonna do with that one. Um, that my my I, I just don't know. I mean, next week we'll definitely it's gonna shake it a bunch up. But like, yeah, I'm interested to see how like where Maya goes with her men. Uh, Rashina, uh, he has her ex Chris, and this is her ex husband too. So they haven't been together for ten years. Um, they have children. Um, they have a mutually obviously when you have children, they're they have a they're co parenting things like that. And she has Chaz and um. He just asked, like, uh, he was asking her about her communication, and then she's like, I'm a little worried about your communication, because I guess sometimes, like, they're having a conversation, and then it stops. But then again, I think, like, if you're on this dating show, like, you're... I mean, it'd be, it be it might be weird to be flirting with a bunch of different... Ch- I, that's the thing. I just don't know what the dynamics are of them talking when they're not on camera and, like, texting. Like, are they... Is he just talking to his connections, or is he talking to all the women? That's, I just, that's what I don't know. So she's a little worried about his connection or his communication. He admits that, like, yeah, maybe I need to lo- be a little more better about that. Uh, so, all right, Mika. Mika has Justin and Leron, and Tommy shows up. And I think it was, like, Leron or Justin was like, oh, is, wow, is Tommy her ex? And I thought that was really funny. Like, I would think the same thing there, too, if I was coming in as, like, one of the dudes, like, on the ex dates. And another thing is Leron, I, I think Leron said it that um, in a professional, he's like, I the thing about Tommy coming is that he should he cares about the um the process and that he like is wants to help everyone out. I, I got that vibe too. Um so I thought that was really cool. Um and then Mika says that she ended her last relationship with the guy that she didn't have her kids with because he was playing too many video games. And Leron was like, Yeah, sometimes like I will take off, like I'll be all I'll play the entire a new game comes out, I'll play the entire weekend, slash even take a day off from work to play. And um Mika did not Mika did not like that. Um she even says that she thinks like there's no ro- romantic connection with Leron and it's just a, a friendship connection. So that pretty much I think deads anything there. Um I think I do think Justin and her are could be like a pretty good match. Um the way there was another thing a question about like how do you handle if like you guys have like a conflict in the morning and like Leron was like, Oh, I'll just check in through the day and um, Justin was like, yeah, I'm going to try to fix the problem immediately. Like we got, we can talk, figure it out. And Mika liked that a lot more too. So I think she's going to be leaning towards him. Uh, and like I said, uh, Alonzo goes on the date in the museum. And then we have the, the then we have the deliberation. And um, so really the people that get uh, are on the bottom are Alonzo. And it's not, it's, I think it's more, like I said, like he doesn't have a lot of connections with anybody else besides Patrice. So Alonzo was at the bottom, Dominique was at the bottom. And somebody even says, I think it was my, like he, she forgot he was, he was here for the process. So again, he just hasn't been on screen that much. I think he lives a little bit further away based off one of the 
um lo- Tommy's lounges he made a comment about like gas or something like that so I'm interested I wonder if that could be a thing where maybe he lived doesn't live close enough where he's like not going to these events or stuff like that um so like I said the bottoms are going to be Alonzo and Dominique Maya takes out Dominique Vanessa takes out Alonzo um he makes a comment also, like I thought it, he was like a, implying that he was also interested in Vanessa. I think she was surprised by that. Um, Alonzo is still ready to love. And that means that Dominique is not ready to love. And I just, based off of his confessional and like what he said after, like he definitely was sad. Like he said, he thought he was doing everything that he can. Um, I got that vibe. I went on Reddit. A lot of people weren't really feeling that way, but I, I let, I didn't have a problem with Dominique. I thought he was a good dude didn't see anything wrong with him. Like everybody's different about like being like, it's a TV show. You got to remember. So I, I don't know. I, it definitely, when he was, when he had his confessional, he like legit looked sad. I kind of felt bad for him, but that's the nature of the show. That's how the show goes. Somebody has to go every single week, but the trailer for next week looks really good. They're going to do like an overnight date. It looks like at a cabin on a lake and it looks like um, Alonzo is laying in bed, holding Mika's hand. And then he's kissing somebody with a strawberry. And he said like, attempting, the temptation gets to it. Sometimes temptation gets to it, brother. So I'm excited for next week. I think the episode looks good. I'm interested to see like how that the dynamics of everyone being in the house goes with like conversations, like tension, attraction. So it'll be good. I'm excited. Um, so I'll be back next week for that. Um, I just dropped uh, Summer House uh, season eight, episode two. A lot of stuff going on that season with Lindsay and Carl. If you're interested in that for Bravo. Um, we have Vanderpump, we have Bachelor, we have Love Love is Blind, we have Farmer Wants a Wife, we have Traders US wrapping up next week. Um, going to probably put something together for Jersey Shore, pretty short, but um, just something out there. But we will we have stuff for everything out there, so make sure to check that out. And if you have any suggestions, drop it in the comments below, and we will definitely give it a chance. Like one of the suggestions was check out Deal or No Deal Island, and we put together a video for that and checked it out, and we ended up liking it. So. Yeah, at the suggestions we take to heart, we definitely always give it a chance. And if we like it, we're going to do a review on it. So appreciate you guys and everyone watching. And we'll see you guys next week or for the next video. See ya.